Discover Thailand with Phil Blizzard, news, views, and interviews. Hello, I'm Phil Blizzard in Dubai with Pod Talks, our Travel Wise special, taking a look at Thailand as it's just reopened to international travelers. So I want to get over there fairly soon. So this is for me and for you. So I want to find out exactly what one needs to get into Thailand. Uh, it's changing all the time, of course, but we're focusing on uh, a group which I, I always think of Anantara as being the flagship of minor hotels. And tell us more and to put me in the right place, I suppose, regarding that thought of mine. Michael Marshall, Chief Operating Officer. Nice to catch up with you once again. Hello, Phil. Uh, great to see you again. And uh, definitely looking forward to you coming back to Thailand uh, very soon, I hope. The land of smiles, and I hear the land of Instagram smiles these days. Things have changed in that respect. So, what Absolutely. is yeah from the uh, sector, hospitality sector, travel sector, regarding the opening up of Thailand to international travel? What's the initial response? It's only just a matter of a couple of weeks or so, isn't it? Yes, no, the response is is very positive. Um, you know, the, the, there is definitely a lot of pent up demand. And, uh, you know, what we've been doing is pushing the government very hard here to reduce as much as possible the um, restrictions. You know, these are the things that really, you know, are the things that's just um, put people off. Um, and we were just talking about how well Dubai had done, you know, by having very, oh. making it very simple. So um, now, you know, there's no quarantine because that was a big barrier before when we had two weeks quarantine. So there's no quarantine. Um, you just take a test on arrival. Um, there is some paperwork still, which you have to you have to uh, put in for the Thailand pass, which is um, you know insurance data and stuff like yeah, this. But sure. it's a it's a lot less than it was before. So we're on the right track. Um, I mean, overall, we've seen good pickup in the especially Phuket. Phuket's leading the way because the the advantage of Phuket it's got a big airport now because the, the size of the airport was doubled yeah. a few years ago and they've got the new terminal. So you've got direct international flights from Emirates, Etihad, you know, the key European airlines, um, it, you know, and they're all going in there. Dubai, D- uh, Dubai is... Just to jump yeah, in regarding big- Phuket, um, they, they pioneered uh, the sandbox concept, didn't they, uh, earlier on in the yes. year for international travellers, yes. So you were saying about yeah. Dubai, big source market, I guess. It's a big source market. Um, Emirates is, is is increasing the size of the planes now, planning 380s, um, increasing the, the frequency. Uh, I mean, we've had about 40, in the first two weeks, we've had about 46,000 arrivals. Um, wow. So it's starting to come in. Um, you know, countries, just to give you an idea, you know, countries that are coming in, UAE, um, mm. the key European countries, so UK, uh, Germany, Switzerland, um, then uh, Russia is 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 coming in. Uh, so we're, US actually as well. So US is one of the, uh, yeah, the, wow. the leaders. So yeah. that that's good. Um, and then you mentioned Emirates what, there. I'm just going to jump in and say I've been doing a bit of looking around, and they've got some very attractive fares at the moment, even sort of leading up to Christmas and New Year. To about two thousand dirhams returned from from Dubai, just over that. So that's really good at the moment. Of course, these things change week by week. So uh, yeah, don't want to forget, get to time for Christmas. Do your booking now, quick. I think. Uh, yes, I, I, definitely. I mean, there is pick up for Christmas and New Year, and and people booking for for January. You know, the first quarter. Yeah. Um, I mean, now people book, you know, it's very different from pre-COVID where people are booking, you know, much later and more last oh. minute and, and, and everything. But we are getting bookings coming in for Q2 as well. So, you know, that's a good right, sign, yeah. particularly yeah. From, from, from Europe. Yeah. Um, I just want to jump back to what you're saying about entry into Thailand because I was reading that you have to do uh, the paperwork and do a PCR on arrival. You have to stay in a hotel for one night until you get the result. Which... That's right. In um, it's if you've come into Bangkok, yeah. yes. So there's a, a test and go they call it, uh, test and go, which yeah. is okay. test and go. Which um, yeah, you do have to do one night um, while the, it's basically just while the test result comes okay. back um, yeah. in Bangkok, and then you can go anywhere. Okay. Um, after that, uh, if you go to Phuket or Samui direct, then you just do the test at the airport. And then you go to your hotel. So they're not allowing yet for the test at the airport to happen in Bangkok. But right. we're putting a lot of pressure on the government and the, okay, uh, <laughs> the airlines are doing the same um, anyway, to, is, to yeah. simplify it even further. 
This is valuable information from our man on the ground in Bangkok, Michael Marshall. So um, I, want to ref- I want to reflect back now on um, what you've gone through in terms of surviving. How important was uh, your reliance on domestic travel over the last 18 months? Uh, it's been crucial. And, it, it, you know, it's it's been so, so important. We we had to move very quickly, you know, when the, the real um, COVID outbreak happened. and and as with most of Asia, you know, the countries are locked down the borders. Yeah. So the only way to get into Thailand or and the Asian countries you know, was um, by doing two weeks quarantine, you know, which really wasn't sure. long for most people. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a lot of paperwork involved in that as well. So it just wasn't on. So we had to pivot and, and go after the, the domestic business. And as I was saying to you earlier, you know, we are... Uh, in the 10 years I've been here, 90% of our business has been international business to Thailand yeah, uh, for sure. our Thai hotels and 10% domestic. So we had to change a lot. We had to change our marketing, our communication, our social media, our um, even our service because our <laughs> hotel guests have been you know, international, used to an international style of service, and our staff have been used to delivering that. They had to then pivot to to do the kind of service that, um, you know, Thais want. And, sure. uh, yeah. you know, the type of food. So we changed our menus, changed our experiences, went more family <laughs> so, um, um, and uh, and went more Instagram, big time, I, you know, I just, Inst- Instagram yeah. spots. Um, I just wa- I'm just wondering now, actually, and this is, makes me smart because I go to Thailand, f- cuisine is such an important thing. So you say you're changing the Thai cuisine to something else, the domestic travellers. And uh, what are they going for? I'll tell you something now. I saw a friend of mine who lives in the Phi Hin, and he posted a photograph of a new restaurant in Phi Hin, and his son was there enjoying the food. He was eating a pizza. So is that what you're having to serve now rather than the traditional Thai cuisine? Uh, <laughs> yes and no, um, Phil. I mean, they really still always like their key, key mainstream Thai dishes. Okay. They will definitely have a pizza. Uh, seafood is very key. Um, of course making it even more spicy because, you know, the tolerance ah. level of, of yeah. foreigners versus Thais, okay. there's quite a big uh, difference. Of course, so, yeah. yeah. So, so um, <laughs> you know, they, if it's not spicy enough, then it's going to get sent back. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so there you go. Back to the original Thai spiciness, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, we're talking about, we're focusing on Thailand, but we will come on to what's happening here in the Middle East for Anantara. But uh, I've mentioned Anantara. What are the other key hotels for you within the kingdom of Thailand? Yeah, I mean, we we have been growing our Avani brand, as you know. And we've opened Avani's in the UAE as well with the, uh, the recent addition of the Avani Palm View. Yeah you know, at the entrance to the palm. And so we developed that brand around six years ago, us, and um, it's, it's our fastest growing brand now. So it sits underneath Anantara. Um, so we've got an uh, Avani on the river next to the Anantara Riverside. Uh, we've got Avani in Phuket, yeah. uh, my cow now. Um, we've got a new Avani opening in um, December, which is uh, a Kaolak, uh, which is Kaolak. close to Phuket. Kaolak is right. a beautiful beach yeah. area about 20 minutes from um, Phuket. And then Krabi, you, you'll have heard of Krabi, yeah, where of we've got two of Arnie's. Uh, one's open, another one coming um, at Koh Lanta soon. So um, I've, I've, there's a yeah. lot of expansion. Yeah, I've seen and stayed in the Avani in the Seychelles and also been to the one on the riverside in Bangkok. So for our, our, our listeners, describe the Avani. I'd say it's a uh, modern contemporary with a bit of funky element to it. That's absolutely right, Phil, you know, perfect description, modern, contemporary, um, you know, it's a bit younger than Anantara and, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it attracts a younger, younger audience um, and, uh, you know, families or couples, you know, young couples, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of the market. So Avani is the one which is moving forward rapidly. We'll come on to the one in Dubai shortly, but I'm thinking I'm, I'm, Christmas, New Year's, it's traditionally, I believe, been the peak season for visitors to Thailand. And we're opening up beginning of uh, November. Not a lot of lead time, really, for people to make their minds up, especially if it's a family group traveling, I suppose. So what are you saying in terms of travelers coming to, to your resorts, your hotels, for Christmas and New Year? Is it younger? Yeah, it is, pick- it is picking up. 
Um, you're right. Um, historically, it would have been very late. Um, mm. You know, in pre pre COVID times, everybody would have booked. Um, now there is still a lot of the European market, UK market that has already booked. Even probably UAE people have already booked because yeah, they got kids, they need to make plans and everything. Sure. But there's still a lot of people who haven't booked, um, you know, because they were still waiting to see or whatever. So we are picking up some of that business, which is which is good news. So let's um, say you have room for Christmas, you have room for New Year. We have room. Okay. Yeah, we have room. Um, it's picking up. Um, we're getting the domestic market as well as obviously what we, you know, we were fully booked last Christmas and New Year, yeah. but with the domestic market. So they're still coming um ties haven't really started traveling internationally yet but um that will happen i'm sure once um you know they get used to the idea that the borders are open and you don't have sure. to quarantine when you come back uh, yeah okay so there is still space yeah. so please anybody come you know please come <laughs> okay. if they're thinking of right, getting yeah. away from dubai okay Talking there with Michael Marshall, and in the next episode of the Travel Wise podcast, we'll be catching up with Michael to talk about their, well, activities, developments, uh, pipeline, future hotels, not only the UAE, but across the region. I'm Phil Blitter with Travel Wise News, Views, and Interviews. I look forward to joining you soon. And if you would like to have a podcast production for your organization, do get in touch with me. Drop me an email, philblizzardmedia at gmail.com. A Phil Blizzard radio production. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews.